Hello, the name's Jidip, and today I'm going to show you how to set up Unreal Engine 5 so that you can create your own stream game overlay like this. Bear in mind, this video will only cover how to output alpha from Unreal Engine and how I got it working with OBS, but this should apply to most broadcasting software. It's worth noting that if you're looking to create a Windows pet or Windows Assistant, this is a great start. However, you're gonna need some Windows hook to be able to enable transparency in Windows. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but if that's something you're interested in, please drop a comment and I will get to work on making that happen as soon as I can. With that being said, that should be enough jibber jibber. Let's just jump straight into it. All right, so here we are. Uh, let's create a new project. We're gonna go, uh, I don't know, games. We'll just use third person why not and we'll just call this stream overlay nice and simple uh, stream overlay uh, create so here we are in a fresh project what we're going to do is we're going to start deleting stuff straight off the bat right we'll leave we'll leave a i don't know a couple of blocks of the environment but we'll just clear the scene do that super quickly we don't need these walls we'll leave the floor uh, we don't need that, and let's delete, uh, what's that one, our volumetric cloud, definitely, our sky atmosphere, we don't want that, all we're going to really want is our skylight and our directional light, uh, we don't even need player start. Okay, so now that we've cleared out the scene, let's start setting up for what else we're going to need, we're going to need to add ourselves a camera actor, uh, right there. Uh, we're going to rotate that camera actor so that it faces everything and we are going to 90 degrees and then we're going to change its uh, in its details section we're going to change perspective to orthographic and then we're going to pull the camera down so that we can see everything again use your little window there see what it's seeing um, and if you want to change how much is visible you're just going to want to change your ortho width so I'm going to do something like that nice and easy and then just look for um, auto activate for player and you're going to want to set that for player zero next uh, if you still have your skylight from the template or if you don't have one add a skylight and we're going to turn off real-time capture and we're going to change our source type to specify cube map and from our cube map we're going to look down and just search gray g-r-a-y and search for just gray texture and what that's going to do is lift the shadows for us because we're not we've got no sky to real time capture anymore right so what we want to do is fake it so to speak all right uh that should be everything you have to do there if you don't have a post process volume go ahead and add one um by clicking add and searching for post process volume and just ensure in its details we search for infinite you'll want to enable infinite extinct or unbound right now in our content drawer we're going to add two blueprint classes we're going to need the first one we're going to search in under all classes and search for game instance and we're going to find game instance and just select that and we're going to call this overlay uh, let's call it stream overlay game instance and then we're also going to add another blueprint and this one is going to be a uh, player control. That's what we're going to need. There we go. That one there will do just fine. We're going to select that and we're going to call this um, PC show cursor. All right. First of all, we're going to open up our stream overlay game instance and we're going to search for event init or initiate. And we're going to start playing with a few settings we're going to need. So we're going to drag off that pin there and go get game user settings. Then we're going to pull off that from again and we're going to go set resolution. Should show us set screen resolution is the one you want to need. And we're going to connect the return value of the game use settings to the target. We're then going to split the structure pin of our resolution and we're going to set whatever resolution you like. For me, it's going to be five, 960 by 540. Um, I want a small little window that I can sort of move over to my other screen. We're going to improve on that in a little bit, uh, but first of all, we're going to pull off from set screen resolution and we're going to search for full screen. Yes, set full screen mode. Again, pull from our get game user settings and pull that into the target. And then we're going to change this to windowed. From that, we're going to execute console command. 
Um, and this is so that I can get a little bit more detail, right? So I've got this little small window I'm making, but when I stretch that over the top of my um, window or to fill the window in OBS, it's going to look, the resolution's not going to be fine. You know, we're stretching is such a small resolution. So what I'm going to do in here in the command, just try to type R dot screen percentage 200 here so actually we'll pull off from the get game user settings return value and we'll just go apply settings there it goes it shows up this time we are going to check for command line overrides and then we're also going to search for apply resolution settings there we go and we just need to make sure that we pull from the game user settings again and plug that into our apply resolution settings we're going to compile and save now back to our content drawer we're going to go open our pc show cursor All right we're going to head up to the event graph and off the begin play node we're just going to go set mouse cursor set show mouse cursor which is just a little boolean and we're just going to click the tick All right and we're done with these two we can close these down now they're saved they're compiled and saved we're going to close those down and we are going to go back to our window here and now this is when we can start playing with the project settings okay we'll hit to edit and go to project settings and the first thing we need to do is replace our game instance with our newly created one so search up game instance uh, and we're going to change that to stream overlay game instance we are then going to search for alpha and we're going to enable alpha channel support in post-processing experimental i'm going to go allow through tone mapper we will also search for um, anti-aliasing method. I'm going to set it back to, it's, it's on TSR by default. Um, I'm going to set it to TAA. TSR is a little bit more performance hungry than TAA. And for a stream overlay, I think this would be the better suit option. I'm also going to search up frame rate. And I'm just going to, under use fixed frame rate, I've already set it here, but um, I'm going to click use fixed frame rate and just set that to 30 frames per second. I don't feel like I'd, I'd need more. That's personal preference again, right? But I don't think you're going to need that to a certain extent. That should be all we need for our project settings. So we can close that now. Back in our viewport, we're just going to go to the world settings and we're just going to make sure that our player controller class is our PC show cursor. And we're going to make sure that our default pawn, pawn class is set to none. That way it's not going to spawn any character when we play the game. It's going to use the main camera we set earlier as the, the camera. And pretty much our setup is ready. We, we have set up, right? Now we can move on to the post-process material. In the content drawer, create yourself a material and call this PP Overlay Trend. Uh, we'll just call this overlay uh overlay material i've already got one so let's just call this overlay material underscore transparency and before we go and do anything in there we just want to go to our post process volume if you haven't got one as we discussed before just add one to the scene and we're going to look under the details and we're going to head down to we're going to search for material and we're going to look for i'm just going to clear this for a second post process materials and here you want to add an array element and you're going to go asset reference in that element and then you're going to search for pp underscore overlay material and the one we called transparency nice done we're going to save everything there and then we're going to open up our pp overlay material transparency so before we start playing with some nodes the first thing we need to do is select our main load um, uh, material there we need to change a few settings under the domain we're going to change material domain to post process then underneath we're going to scroll all the way down and my, my head might be in the way here so let me just move it over there so you want to look for blendable location you're going to change that to before tone mapping now i believe in unreal engine 5.4 that is called scene color before dof so just keep that in mind that might be the only difference there for 5.4 users and then we want to output alpha cool that should be everything we need for the actual overlay material itself. So let's start adding some nodes. The first node we're gonna to wanna to add is scene texture. And we're going to click the little arrow down the bottom and you should get scene texture ID. We're gonna change our first one to scene depth. Then we're gonna copy and paste that and we're gonna set our 
second one to custom depth. Then we're going to add an if, an if node, and then we're going to plug our scene depth color into slot A and our custom depth color into slot B. And now holding down the one key, we're going to add and left click while holding down the one key, we'll add a constant. We're going to add two of those. And we're going to set our first one to zero and our second one to one. And we're going to plug our zero constant into B greater than A. And then we're going to set our second constant into A is less than B. Plug this straight into the opacity. And I'll show you what this does in a second. But lastly, we need to add copy and paste or add one more scene texture. And we're going to change this one to post process input zero. And we're going to plug this one into our emissive color. And this should give us our scene back. We apply and save that. All right. So we've pretty much made our material and as a basis, this is going to work. We're going to evolve on this a little bit soon, but I'm going to talk you through what's happening so far. So what's happening here is that we are comparing the scene depth against custom depth. Uh, scene depth gives the distance to objects from the camera, right? And custom depth, when no object is assigned to it, holds a very large value. If we look back at our scene, this black space or whatever is nothingness. So in terms of custom depth, its value is probably as large as it can go, <laughs> if that makes sense to, to a certain extent. And so what we're doing is if something is in custom depth, is visible to the camera and scene depth, it's going to output a value of one, making our, mater our post-process material opaque. However, if it is not visible to the scene depth, it must hold a very high custom depth value and therefore we run the opacity zero. Now I tried to do this without the custom depth node and just adding distance in there, but ran into heaps of, it ran into some very strange errors and, and whatever. So I found that this was the more solidified way to make this happen. Anyway, now that it's done, we apply and save that and what we need to do is test. Let's test. And the way we can test this is not in the editor. Now it's not gonna work in the editor or pie mode, but it will work in standalone game mode. So we don't have to build the game to make sure this works. So I'm just gonna click the three dot down there and run standalone game. And I'm just gonna minimize this. Cool. All right, next I'm gonna get OBS. And the first thing we want to do is we want to right click and we want to add and click select game capture and we're just going to call this uh, stream overlay game and we're going to click ok capture specific window under mode and the window is going to be our stream overlay 64-bit development because this should match the name of what's on top and sure enough there it is and then we're just going to allow transparency and click ok and there it is if we if i move obs back over to here and we also bring the little mini game back over here as well and I resize this there it is we have our our overlay inside OBS which is perfect we know it's working so what are our limitations with our post-process material already well if we were to assign anything in the scene anything at all to the custom depth pass depth pass we don't have any this is this object's going to disappear right because our comparison is compare comparing scene depth against the custom depth path which means that anything set to the custom depth path is going is going to be invisible which might be annoying to some people as they might want a cell shaded post-processing material using custom depth as we have seen on youtube and and those comprehensive setups before so what is a way we can work around this we, we can still keep custom depth available for certain objects we keep the let's call it the abyss in the background outputting transparency well we can use stencils uh, you can see a custom depth stencil value just below the render custom depth pass on objects let's go back to our project settings for a little bit and what we're going to search for is custom depth how many times can i say custom depth right and under the custom depth stencil pass, the default is just enabled. What we want to change that to is enabled with stencil. And now that's done, we can close. 
What we want to do is just go back to our post process material and add just a little bit more further logic, not complicated logic, but a little bit further um, to al allow us to bring our custom depth pass switch back for certain objects. First thing we're going to need is another scene texture. So I'm just going to copy the scene depth and I'm going to open it and change it to custom stencil. Then I'm going to pull off the color and I'm going to search for another if node. And then we are going to add one single constant. So hold down the one key and just left click and you get a constant. And I'm going to set this value to one. We're going to plug the one value into the B slot. The B is greater than A slot and the B is equal to A. And then we're going to bring from our previous if to A is less than B. And then we're going to from that result into the opacity. And so what this tells us is any Thing that's using the custom depth pass or any object in the scene that's using the custom depth pass if it has a stencil value of one it's going to output a, a value of one from the if node and we know that an opacity switch is zero is transparent and one is opaque visible so now we have this extra check just this little clean extra check so what we do is we apply and save that and now if we were to head back into our game scene and select any object, let's just use the right shape there. And we're going to enable custom depth pass and then we're just gonna set its stencil value to one. If we save that and run the game in standalone again, activate that OBS game overlay I had before, give it a second to find it, boom, there it is. What you can see now is that our right shape it's still visible, even though it's using the custom depth pass. However, our background is completely gone. I hope that makes sense, but it's it's just another way to bring back our ability to add objects to the custom depth pass. So that's it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. You have set up the basis of your project to be able to create a stream overlay, whatever you like. Whether the objects use custom depth pass or not you're going to be able to control that so i hope that video was informative i hope that it helped you get set up so that you can have basically transparency and create whatever you want to make your streams ten thousand times better right <laughs> so thank you for watching and if you like what you saw or want to learn more i'll be making more tutorials of course so uh, you know the drill like and subscribe <laughs> ring the bell if you want some notifications although not necessary i know how annoying notifications can be and uh you have a wonderful day